We are clarifying with the words added um, that have exited the interstate at Campbell Station Road interchange and that, just making some modifications, um, provide gas food lodging, are located within the CC Regional District, and that front on versus and are located on streets classified as local selected for local on the major road plan. Um, when this was presented to the Visual Resources Review Board, they discussed the option, the idea of it also allowing trailblazer signs on Parkside Drive. The problem with that is, is that I'll use the Super 8 again, or I'll use Hampton Inn as an example, is that, or Wild Wings Cafe, for example, is under the Interstate Trailblazer logo requirements, the Wild Wings Cafe cannot have a logo at Level Road. It has to be at the Campbell Station Road interchange. They have certain criteria that you have to meet. Plus, if you put a sign on Parkside Drive, you're not tying it back to anything from Level Road. So in essence, you're offering an off-premise sign off of Parkside Drive that you don't allow any other business to have. And so at the staff level, we don't support that because there wouldn't be a sign at Level Road and Parkside Drive that's a trailblazer saying, hey, turn this way, and then another one, you know, turning, um, and there wouldn't be one at Level Road if your intent is to go to the Wild Wings Cafe. Um, since this is tied to the trailblazer sign uh, program, we feel that the, um, it should kind of be tied to the Campbell Station Road interchange, which is the interchange that's within the town of Sheridan. The trailblazer sign is after you pass by Lovell Road, isn't it? That indicates the ones that are well, it Campbell would, Station. There wouldn't be one at Lovell Road because that's in Knox County. Um, so the intent is that this is a cohesive program that you're starting as you're going down the interstate. You see that you can get off and see the Super 8, get to the bottom of the ramp, it says turn left and go X number of point two miles or whatever. And then as you're approaching that point two miles, there's another sign that says, hey, this is where you turn. Um, Just out of curiosity, what, what is Knox County doing? Is it, are they silent on this entire Actually, the trailblazer sign Level Road may have trailblazer signs, but they are not geared for in city areas because they're, the interchanges are too close together. I think Cedar Bluff might have one. But anyway, when you're getting into the city, they don't have them because you don't have enough room in between interchanges and there's no place to put the sign to where people could actually get off at that location. So your more urbanized areas the Trailway Blazer program is not applicable. And I'm trying to, rem I think Level Road has them, but I think that might, I can't remember, but I know that when you get into the city center areas, there are the Trailblazer sign program is not. Different question for you. In, in today's world of every, uh, almost everybody having a GPS, are, are these Trailblazer signs kind of reaching the end of, the, of their usefulness or not? I mean, are you hearing anything in your? No. Um, but you make a really valid point from the standpoint that is one of the reasons why we don't feel it should be from Level Road because if I've punched in um, Wild Wings Cafe, for example, um, my GPS is going to take me to Lo is going to take me to Campbell Station Road. It's not going to take me to Level Road. Uh, but also, if I'm coming off at Level Road, I don't even know it's there if I'm an interstate traveler. So having it on Parkside Drive really is just an off-premise sign that we don't allow for anybody else in town. And um, it may be a thing of the past at some point in time, but everybody loves them. I mean, still as a traveler, you still will rely on them. I, I this quite a bit when I'm traveling in spite of the GPS. I find that uh, when we upgraded our GPS, it got worse. So I'm hoping the next upgrade might be better. <laughs> Ruth, I can understand some of our hotels that are a little bit off the beaten path that aren't visible from Campbell Station, but I think, I mean, would somebody, Cracker Barrel, very prominent sign right on Campbell Station, I-40 visibility, 
is that something would Cracker Barrel be eligible for one of these? Uh, they can type? get they get the T dots one. That's but they don't get ours because they are located on Campbell Station Road. This is just for businesses that are located off okay. off of um I, I non obviously arterials. missed that somewhere. But I think um so I guess our goal is the folks that that don't have the visibility for these trailblazer signs to direct folks traveling to be able to find their business. Is that? It's really directed toward that if you're making a turn, you know, if you're not fronting on Campbell Station Road and you have to turn off onto a side street, you'd be eligible for a trailblazer sign. Uh, Baymont Inn, I think, is the one that I included in here as the example is the Baymont Inn. They have a trailblazer sign. Baymont Inn is located behind the cr cr behind the Cracker Barrel. So when you get off the interstate, um, you know you're looking. You know it told you that you had 0.2 miles to go. So at 0.2 miles, you're kind of glancing around and you're not seeing the Baymont Inn because it's off the off the road. But then you'll see the next Trailblazer sign that says, "Oops, turn off this side road," and that's where the Baymont Inn is. Hence why we have the language for the local collectors and the local roads Correct. on there, and that prohibits the arterials. Correct. W one other question that I have is this program produces a significant amount, well, maybe not in TDOT's eyes, but a fair amount of revenue for TDOT. The, they're fairly expensive to participate in the Trailblazer program with TDOT and getting on the interstate. What is, is this, is it, is the potential for this to be a revenue producer for the town? Dollars per year per sign. Okay. Ruth, tell us how you get to be, get to have your name on the interstate sign. It's a program through TDOT. You have to contact them, and they have a fee. I do not know. I may be more aware of their fee than I am. I, um, I remember it was expensive. I had a friend of mine that had some gas station business in Lenore City, and they were expensive. And I can't. And that was ten years ago. I mean, over a thousand dollars. But that was for the interstate. Maybe it has to do with traffic count. I don't know. But if you pay for a billboard, that's oh yeah, small potatoes. Well, yeah, two hundred fifty bucks a year is a bargain. You know. But that's something the individual business owner has to contact the state right. and they, they initiate yeah, it. They initiate it themselves. Um, the Trailblazer sign, sign program actually has been an extremely successful, popular program and travelers tend to rely on them. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, if you're traveling and you like a particular, you know, you like a particular restaurant or whatever. I was joking about the Bob Evans because there's no Bob Evans around here and nobody wants Bob Evans. But, you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like, okay, we're going to stop for breakfast in about not within the next 45 minutes. Well, we're driving along and we're not big fans of billboards, so we appreciate those trailblazer sign that says, oh, there's Bob Evans next exit. Okay, let's go over and get off kind of thing. Or if you're, you know, you're running low on gas and you have a shell card or BP card or whatever, and that's your preference. Um, you don't have to rely on a billboard currently or seeing the tall pylon sign. So it's our intent that um, only those people who are on the interstate sign, sign would have would have that. And that may need to be clarified on here that you know that it's tied into. We say that the signs shall be modeled after the interstate. Um, we may need to add a statement in there at the front with business establishments that cater to the interstate traveler that have exited the interstate at the Campbell Station Road interchange. Da, 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 da. Well, I can I can foresee that somebody sees another business that has their name up there. And they don't, and they, you know, are upset about it. But they have to take the initiative and pay the money in the first place. That's nothing. It's no decision by the town of Farragut. And I agree with Rita. I think there should be some tie-in with the state TDOT program. Now, the difficult thing is going to be to enforce that. I don't know if well, if there's we get, every July we we renew. We send out letters and say, hey, it's time to pay your fee. Um, and then, you know, if they didn't have one out there, then we just say you're not eligible, and then that's how the clerk tries to take it down. So 
is there a way, is there a database that you could check to see if they've enrolled in the state program? We would just go out and take a look. Oh, just drive down the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're not okay. going to well, I, I didn't know. I was just trying to make it a little easier on staff to tie those two in together because I think it would I mean, kind of make sense. I like kind of what Rita said that it, it, at, least we're, at least we're not the bad guy. I can come up with some wording off the top of my head. I'm trying to think if it's, I don't, because we, the signs shall be modeled after the interstate directional logo signs known as the trailblazer and shall meet the following criteria. Um, I think maybe in that sentence, it should be modeled after it and a business must, shall have a, shall be enrolled in the program or something to that effect. Our signs seem lots of them. We, this does not affect very many businesses in town, but it's kind of one of those things where, like I said, you read something and we've all talked about it, so it says that. And then somebody who's not. Matter of fact, might I lose business. <laughs> so. It's irritating when you get off because the place you want to yeah, go. Yeah, because you got the, then, the continuation get, of that path. Then you get the, the sign that says whatever you're looking for, five miles yeah. this way. Oh, that <laughs> is annoying. <laughs> then you get right back on the interstate. That's like yeah. one over at uh, 95. You get off at, at Melton Hill. Uh, the signs are talking about the food, but it's all the way back to the North City. Right, it's like five is. miles, right? <laughs> I mean, quite, quite honestly, I can probably only count maybe three. I'm trying to think, well, maybe on the north side. We might have a couple that would be eligible on the north side that would be on a local or a local collector. Yes, they and they opted not. No, because it's uh, their um, arterials. Oh, those are arterials? Like where yeah, the a Snyder Road is an arterial, okay. minor arterial. And what about the one where the, the golf place is on the other side, on the west side of Campbell Station? That's... I know it's not really an attraction. Well, it might, might be an attraction, but... I'm thinking of the some of the hotels, the hotel that they just the, just got uh, completed and renovated. Uh, Comfort Suites. It fronts on it's Campbell, Campbell, Campbell Station, Station okay. Road. So, the one that we, you know, that's had some problems is the Country Inn and Suites or Country Inn and Hearth, whatever. Country Inn and Suites. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, Annette would be embarrassed of me um, that I can't remember <laughs> the name. <laughs> um, is just trying to get dir people directed. And so I think you were on the VRB, but they got a double mounted sign so because their access is through Comfort Suites. Right. And um, that was how we dealt with that one. Anybody else have any? Just, just a matter of interest. Since the town um, will own and maintain the structure and the directional arrows and mileage indicators, how expensive are those signs? matter of interest since I assume the town will be buying that the arrows nope. uh, oh, letter oh, okay. I, I, I the individual logo shall be owned and maintained by the individual business and the space well, I saw be that yeah we don't purchase them they have to purchase them. okay but we do read so I mean our, the $250 that we receive the only cost that we have is just the public works going out there and putting it up Central location that they buy these from? They're sign companies that um, that you so can buy these the from. they're all the same thing. Oh, I got a I'll tell you something else. There's a lot of different sign companies. <laughs> there is, Rita. There's some local companies like Highway yeah. Materials up on Clinton Highway, and you can you can go in and order it and meet all the specifications. There's certain reflectivity requirements and things like that, which is a good thing because when you're driving down the interstate, you really do need the reflectivity. Well, and the background colors we're going to tie in with the, the yeah. Trailblazer program. And I will make that addition, and then I will bring this back to you at the next meeting. Um.